What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you back on the channel. On today's episode, we'll be looking at shoes. This is the ultimate shoe anatomy guide. I'll run you guys through as beginners in terms of the different parts of a traditional shoe. Shoe design can be quite complex and honestly, when I first started, I didn't know where to begin. First, we'll start off by looking at the different components of the most common types of shoes. Then we'll outline the functions of those components. And then as designers, we want to know what materials are appropriate to use in each part. Well, that's what this video is going to go through. If you guys have ever been interested in getting into shoe design, this is the video for you. So strap up, you're in for a good one. Hey guys, and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around, you're in for a good one. We'll start off by considering a standard sportswear shoe and looking at the different components that we see. Well, one of the most common components and something that's easy to call out is our shoelacing system. The main functionality here is that it's the main fastening component of a shoe. Without our shoelace, we wouldn't be able to tighten, to loosen, and ultimately to hold the shoe and the foot in place. Some common materials that we see are leather, woven fabrics, polypropylene ropes, or even webbing materials. Moving on from the shoelaces, we have one of the more prominent parts of the shoe, and this is what's known as our upper. This is the entire fabric that covers the upper portion of the shoe, and really its main functionality is to hold the foot in place. If you think about it, without an upper, how would your foot actually grab into the shoe? So that's what the main functionality of an upper is, and it's connected to the sole of the shoe, either by a strip of leather, plastics, or any other material that's appropriate for that specific shoe function. And this is otherwise known as a welt. And there are different types of welt constructions that we can go into in another video. If you guys are interested, leave a comment below and let us know if you are. But some of the main materials that we use to construct uppers are calf, different types of hides, depending on the luxury and the actual like style of shoe. We also have things like cotton, linen, canvas materials, synthetic materials that are usually used in shoes. This is definitely a synthetic material with a bit of spandex or lycra in it to give it the stretch and the tension it needs. So there are a ton of different finishes that we can go for when it comes to a great quality shoe. But ultimately, the type of material that we choose is going to depend on the functionality. I highly recommend looking at woven fabrics for shoes that are constructed specifically with sports in mind and make sure to use some synthetic materials. Synthetic materials are typically a lower cost alternative, but they do the job well and they're very robust and they hold up over time. Moving on from the upper, we have our lining. So our lining is essentially what it's called. It's our lining. It covers the inside of the foot. Lining can do things like wick sweat away, so it can pull moisture away from the foot, which is essential when it comes to sportswear shoes. It can provide additional comfort like padding, and ultimately it can just be a place that enhances the customer experience. A good lining cannot be understated, and great materials to use are either sheepskin, which you see on more luxury items, pigskin, or fabric. Fabric is extremely common and it's quite used in sportswear materials, and this fabric can also be something like polyester or a synthetic material that can help wick sweat away and ultimately keep the shoe dry and keep the wearer comfortable. After the lining of the shoe, we have our toe puff and our heel stiffener. The toe puff and the heel stiffener serve to provide support and structure to the shoe. Without a heel stiffener, your heel would collapse and ultimately that would be a very uncomfortable shoe. Of course, there are many different styles of shoes that don't have heel stiffeners or even toe puffs. But for a sportswear shoe, you definitely want to make sure that you have that support and you're going, to have, you're going to need it in order to retain the shape of the shoe, the silhouette of the shoe. Some common materials that we see on both of these parts are thermoplastic materials. Uh, there's also a fiberboard that's quite common that you just add a glue to the back and you stick it on wherever you need. So the specific type of material is going to depend on your shoe, but we highly recommend looking at fiberboard. It's quite a common material to use for the stiffeners on sportswear items. Next, we have the insole. 
The insole is attached to what's known as the lasting margin of the upper. So the upper actually, if you notice the way that the upper is attached to the sole, it wraps in and there's a margin of fabric that's left to which the insole actually wedges in between. And this is essentially done during the lasting process. So when they're removing the last at the end, that's basically how they kind of seal in the shoe and make sure that everything is tight and firm. When it comes to great insole materials, there's really two options that we see. Fiberboard, which is more common with sportswear, and then leather, which is more for traditional shoe items and higher end shoes. Going hand in hand with the insole, we have what's known as the shank. So you can't see the shank on this specific shoe and actually most shoes because it's wedged right in between the insole and the actual sole of the shoe. But together with the insole, the shank helps provide the foundational support of the shoe. It basically strengthens the back and the joint of the shoe and making sure that everything kind of like does it flex more than it needs to? And that's essential, especially for a sportswear shoe where you're gonna be running with it, you're going to be doing high intensity training sessions. So making sure to have a good shank that's made out of the right material. And what materials those will be? Well, you can either have wood. Wood is quite common, especially about if you have a low heel shoe. Uh, fiberboard is extremely common. And really you can even have steel, depending on if it's a work shoe, a lot of work shoes have steel in them just to make sure that you give it that rigidity that it needs. Something that's quite common with sports wear items is you have a midsole. So this is an optional part. You don't usually see it on luxury shoes or more traditional shoes. You typically see the outsole before a midsole, but this shoe has a midsole. And a midsole just helps provide cushioning and additional shock support. So if you think like Nike shocks, um, that's a great example of good midsole cushioning. Some materials that are used are really just EVA or ethyl vinyl acetate. This is actually EVA. You can see you can pretty much mold it into whatever you need. And it's just a great way to provide just additional support and comfort to the wearer. In my opinion, one of the more important parts of a shoe and one where you should not compromise on the quality of materials is your outsole or the sole unit. And this is pretty much the outermost layer of the shoe. And this is the layer that comes into direct contact with the ground. So it should be durable, it should provide stability, and it should provide the necessary friction that you need. You don't want to have an outsole that's going to get you all slipping around and ultimately you're going to create a hazard for you that's unnecessary. So the outsole typically comes either as a single piece. Um, in some luxury shoes, it's layered leather. Some other shoes, it gets much more of a complex structure. So this one is actually made out of multiple pieces. You can see on the inner foot and then the outer foot, you have different pieces for your midsole or your outer sole. So it does depend on the specific design, but you can either have one single piece or multiple pieces in the assembly. Some common materials, and there are a ton, there's leather. So a lot of luxury shoes will use leather, but leather wears out faster over time. Leather is more of like an indoor shoe in my opinion or make sure to get a layered leather. It comes with a ton of different layers. It's still gonna wear out over time, but you're gonna get a bit more wear out of it. Um, rubber or rubber cup soles are very common on sports shoes, thermoplastics, TPRs, polyurethane or PU. Also, this is a uh, alternative for synthetic leather. So kind of like on fake luxury shoes, you might see PU leather soles. Uh, brown polyurethane, wood, PVC and cork, all are very common materials and again, the ones that we see most are the rubber cup soles or let's just say PUs maybe common on some sportswear items. And lastly, we have the heel portion of our shoe. This is what's known as a low heel and ultimately the heel provides support to the heel of the foot. Some common materials that we see used are wood, nylon, polycarbonates are very common, have a central core, metal sometimes depending on the shoe, if it's a heavy duty shoe, core or perspex. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the anatomy of a shoe. At this stage, you guys should have all the information you need to call out the different parts of the shoe and suggest materials. If you guys enjoyed this video on the ultimate shoe anatomy guide, please let us know in the comments below. Let us know what shoe related videos you wanna see next. I'm personally extremely interested in shoe design and just shoe anatomy in general. I think it's a wonderful world. Uh, a little bit more complex, but we can definitely get into it if you guys want. Thank you so much for tuning in to Fit Design TV. You guys are awesome. Till next time, stay even more awesome.